This is a community gathering place. It's been here since 2005. It is a place, as we say, where racial and cultural connections are consciously uplifted. A place where art, culture, and politics come together and intentionally collide. A place where people take a deliberate pause, take their time out, and be able to come in here and relax and enjoy uh, over a cup of coffee or a wonderful meal. My name is Andy Shalal. I'm the owner of Busboys and Poets and Edenville Restaurant. You may know that Busboys and Poets is named after Langston Hughes, the great African-American poet that lived here in the early part of the 20th century. Um, across the street, Edenville is named after the oldest African-American incorporated town in the country. Um, it was incorporated in 1887, located right outside of Orlando, Florida. And it's named uh, after uh, that town, but something special about that town is where Zora Neale Hurston lived as well. She lived and played there. And, uh, and grew up there as a, young, uh, as a young woman and a young teenager. Uh, and then she left that town, but a lot of her thoughts and her ideas and her uh, sort of um, uh, the storylines that she uses for a lot of her novels uh, take place and germinate in the porches and, uh, and, uh, and wonderful little corners of Edenville, Florida, that little town of 2,000 people. I mean, literature and art is only going to go so far for people to be able to come into a place, you know. You, you reach a much wider swath of people because more people eat than come to museums. Uh, so I think it's really important to have a space where you can bring people in first and then be able to infuse them with the art and culture that we do here. So sometimes the food is just basically um, creates a watering hole for people. The message that I like to send is oftentimes we think like our times are very daunting but there's so much going on that is so difficult and all you have to do is look at the mural behind me and see that there were much more difficult times than other times. And people thought that they were against insurmountable odds. And yet, they still woke up every day. They still make it happen. Uh, you know, Langston Hughes lived in the 1920s, 1930s in this country, where it was like the worst possible place for a black man to live in so many ways. And for him to be able to still have hope, still look at the possibilities of what America could be was quite remarkable. He wrote a poem called Let America Be America Again, which I think really speaks to that, speaks to the fact that he's able to say, let this country that has oppressed me for so long be America again. And one has to ask, what is the again part? Like, what is he talking about? And he talks about the America that could be, the possibilities of America. He says, let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plane seeking a home where he himself is free. America was never America to me. For me, you know, looking at how this country has changed over time uh, empowers me in so many ways. Uh, in 1966, when my family moved to this country, it was illegal for a black person and a white person to marry in Virginia. So I lived to see that, and I lived to see that change. Well, Howard Zinn always said that movements don't begin from the top they begin from the bottom. They begin with an individual, with an idea, with a thought. And usually that person is someone who is thinking about justice, who's thinking like where I am is not a good place and I need to be able to change that. So oftentimes those people tend to be minorities, tend to be uh, people of color, tend to be people that have been historically oppressed. So I think to highlight their voices and bring them out I think is a key and a key lesson for all of us to know that we are all capable of change that every individual is capable of change. That oftentimes we feel that the system is so top heavy, is so daunting, is so difficult to crack and break and change. But yet, it's happened every single time throughout history. We've seen it over and over and over again. I think the most important social issues that is uh, between us right now is poverty. I think it's the invisible problem, sometimes visible, but a lot of times invisible. And I think it's something that we have to really be able and be willing to address. Otherwise, I think we'll find ourselves in a very unsustainable world. With that in mind, I think it's really disturbing to see the widening of the gap between people who are really prospering and people who are really falling between the cracks. I've been in a huge tour of America. I've, been, I've seen firsthand how 
awesome the people are, how the food is amazing, how it's huge, and how um, there's so much to see and do.